What's up everybody, Steve here. I've got a sad story about Hertz, the uh, car rental company. Uh, this, this story might give you some insight into maybe your current employer, maybe your pension system, uh, maybe even in the, the strategy in which you invest. So stick with me, I think you guys can probably learn something from the research that I've done. So how did this 100 year old company end up in bankruptcy and was the pandemic the cause of it? Hertz declared bankruptcy laying off thousands of employees and this really hits home because they actually moved their, uh, their world headquarters from New Jersey to South Florida, specifically in Estero, Florida. And um, I knew a lot of people that worked in this organization and many of which got uh, laid off. But, but my question is, why? What happened? Which encouraged me to research and read more about this whole situation of um, why, why they, uh, they're in the situation that they're in right now. So I'm going to bring you to two places. Number one is their world headquarters in Estero, Florida. And number two is uh, another thing that you might see some mismanagement of funds and uh we'll, we'll post up there and talk more about this whole situation with hertz and the downfall of the rental company so hertz moved their world headquarters in 2015 to estero florida from new jersey as previously mentioned and i was like wow that's a good move at the end of the day new jersey is a high tax rate state so I think it made sense for any kind of corporations to move to South Florida or to Florida in general. But also, I was like, thumbs up to Southwest Florida bringing a giant into the area. Now, instead of leasing a property initially or maybe buying a used property, they went ahead and built this monster back here. It's about 240,000 square feet. It's got a huge parking garage. It's got a daycare center. There's jogging paths. Now, you might be saying, Steve, you know what? They probably had to build their, their headquarters for their employees and, and employee uh, retention and so forth. They probably did a good job. I would say yes if Hertz was fiscally responsible. So let's go ahead and check out the next place. Now, as you can see behind me, Hertz is plastered all over this arena. And uh, essentially, they bought the naming rights, and usually these contracts are very lengthy in size. Uh, the last one, I believe, um, used to be held by Germain Arena, and that's a, a car dealership here. And I believe it was a 20 year term and uh, they did not disclose the pricing. I bet if we dug into the financials for Hertz, we'd probably find it somewhere. Um, not exactly sure what the cost, but I can tell you it's not cheap. Now you might be saying, Steve, yeah, but it's a good thing. It's, it's good marketing, it's big marketing. Every time somebody comes to the arena, they're, they're saying, let's go to Hertz Arena to watch the Florida Everblades, or watch the big event that's gonna happen. And it does draw in a lot of people. It does draw in a lot of attention. And I would say, yeah, it might've been a good strategy, a good marketing strategy for Hertz if, again, they were financially and fiscally responsible. And by the way, all these cars that you see here, they are not cars by individuals who are at some sort of event. There's no event going on right now. This is actually just a portion of Hertz's fleet that they either have to start selling off or transfer to other, I don't know what's gonna happen with this fleet, but I know that they're probably, I know that they are starting to sell off some of the cars, but they, they have a lot, a lot of cars in their fleet, as you guys can see. And we're gonna go into detail exactly why these vehicles are such a big deal in terms of the mismanagement of funds. So obviously the pandemic definitely hurt hurts as a whole. Obviously people are not flying as much, they're not traveling as much. And it is a big deal. You know, if you're not flying, you're not traveling, then you're not renting a car. It's the, it's the domino effect with uh, what we're faced with right now. But my question is, is, was the pandemic the result of Hertz really laying off thousands of people and eventually going bankrupt? Look, these large organizations like Hertz, they do have a responsibility. They have a responsibility to their employees. They have a responsibility to uh, the, the shareholders. They have a responsibility to investors of the organization. If you don't take that 
very seriously, then you're hurting and affecting a lot of people. I'm also gonna put a link below for you guys to check out. It's the article, the Forbes article as well, so you guys can read this in its entirety. And look, it's not just the small guys that got hit, it's the bigger guys as well. Carl Icahn, for example, he owned a major, major stake in this organization, and he sold off all of his shares in the amount of $40 million, but the kicker is he sold at nearly a $2 billion loss in that transaction. So let me run you through a quick bullet points. 2005, Ford Motor Company decided to carve out the car rental giant to private equity investors in what is called leverage buyout transaction, also known as LBOs. The deal was heavily leveraged and a year later, the private equity group brought Hertz public. The private equity investors got out with a huge payout and left its debt obligation with the company. 2019, even before the pandemic happened, Hertz had 90% debt in its total cap Capital compared with the average industry which is roughly about 45 to 50 percent but here's where things get weird and you can make your own decision on how it all played out Hertz debt obligations were primarily in the form of ABS asset backed securities now out of the 17 billion in total debt the company raised 13 billion that was indebted against you got it vehicles a depreciating asset an asset if you want to call it an asset i don't know subsidiary of the company raised funds through bond sales and used those funds to buy cars hertz then leased the cars from the subsidiary lease payments are then used to pay back the abs investors these risky securities are bought by investors like hedge funds insurance companies and who knows maybe even the pension that you have Hertz couldn't negotiate its debt with all creditors and had to eventually file for bankruptcy. But check this out, you'll feel real good about this one. In an SEC filing, it's alleged 340 of its employees will get disbursements in the amount of just over $16 million. Now, almost 8% of that is gonna go to the head of the fish. 700,000 to Paul Jones, who's the president and CEO and 600,000 to Jameer Jackson, who's the VP and CFO. The fish stings from the head. Here are my final thoughts. For one thing, if you have a pension, really get involved in that pension system and what they are investing into. Second, if you are buying into stocks, be sure you know the companies in and out, study their financials, see what they're investing, see what their debt positions are. And third, if you have an employer, always have a plan B. As always, guys, I appreciate you guys tuning in. If you like this video, I appreciate a big thumbs up. And uh, thanks for watching. Oh, if I can get some of these cars on the cheap, I'll buy a couple. There are a couple Escalades right there.